Hello and welcome to Gaza. As most of you know, this is a very difficult place to enter. And for the Palestinians here, it is just as hard, if not more difficult, to leave. You know, if I get a little bit, a little bit farther down the street, I guess I'm gonna die. I'm standing here with Dima Michelle, a Gaza pre-med student who's helping me to understand what I'm seeing and hearing. We're immediately outside a small makeshift open shed that's the waiting room for those hoping to travel through a maze of turnstiles and barricades to arrive in Israel, just the other side of a 12-foot concrete barrier that's looming in front of us. Most of those here today are traveling for medical attention or their students accepted at U.S. universities who must first travel to Jerusalem and the U.S. consulate for visa interviews. But there's no guarantee those waiting today will be granted transit. Some have come day after day. Access into Israel is at the whim of an Israeli bureaucracy over which individual Gazans have little to no control. So that's first. Uh, but the second thing, I feel when I look there, um, I feel a little bit like this thing is stopping me, like stopping my dreams, stopping me from everything, like stop the life of me because um, I have those dreams and this thing like cut it. Why am I here in Gaza? No simple or pat answer to that. It would be easy to say I'm here as a maker of documentaries and Gaza could easily be defined as the center of the news universe. But it's more than that personally. It's a sense of moral responsibility, a Jewish tradition. The need to help tell a story little understood in the West. In order to be accurate and honest, the worst yet to come. That was Jabbar Wilshire, field director at the Palestine Center for Human Rights. He spends a lot of time here at the Eretz Crossing, documenting cases where civil rights have been denied. Because people here, every single person here, they feel complete uncertainty in every aspect of, of life, political, economical, social. So people, uncertainty is more dangerous than danger itself. Jabbar, Dima, and myself are now looking towards the road leading to Gaza City. And in front of us is a vast sea of rubble and concrete shells of buildings that once were home to over 3,000 workers, making clothes, furniture, housewares, all headed to Israel and beyond. Now, there is nothing except the looks of fear, anxiety, and sad desperation we see on the faces in the waiting room behind us. And these faces call to mind the theory of social scientist Abraham Maslow and his concept of the hierarchy of need. Another Jew, I wonder what his take would be on seeing the scene of human and physical desolation and emptiness. For Maslow, there are five levels of human need, beginning with the physiological, simply what the body needs to survive, air, water, shelter, food. And until these basic needs are met, it's difficult, if not impossible, to rise to the next levels. Concern for one's safety, the will to love, to have self-esteem, and most importantly, to achieve self-actualization, the ability to creatively problem solve. Here in Gaza, it is not only safe to say the vast majority of the men, women, and children are living life in a pure survival mode, but there is something else that Maslow's theory does not even factor in, the sheer daily terror of a horrific death from above, which is a constant an ever-present danger.
Yeah, hold on, man. Yeah, hold on. Huh? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, yeah, hold on, man. Hold on. Yeah, hold on.